Brilliant. Good job, guys. Well done. Did you have an ask? Yes. Um, well, no, we didn't actually. We didn't, but... Do you, do you have an ask? Was No, we don't. We don't. We don't. Not really. It was kind of for like developing our website when we were going to get to that stage. Yep. Yeah, which we'll would be around, it would be like help. 70 to 80 dollars, something like that. Yeah, because it's, it's more, I think we, we left it more up to you because it was, we didn't feel like it was our point to judge because we don't know where we are in, yeah. in the, like the production stage and whatever. So yeah. like, whatever we can get, we'll, we'll start. We'll yeah. I think you've got a really neat idea and I think you should pursue it. Um, and if it's just 70 or 80 bucks you want, just get um, Mrs. Cullen to tell me when you need it and I will give you that money. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How are we today? Everyone good? Yep. yep. Great. Um, so I just want to ask a question first. How many of you guys in here are guitar players? Righto. So how many, how often do you reckon you'll drop a pick? Lots of times. Right, this is a very sad problem to have, isn't it? And it's, it's worse when it goes inside your acoustic, and you drop oh, it inside the acoustic. Don't get me started on that. This mm. is bad as having someone grab me by the sound hole. Yeah. It's, it's heartbreaking when that happens. You see, guitarists for years have had this problem. Even the great Van Halen, Eddie Van Halen, had had to use double-sided tape, a very crude method of holding picks on the on his guitar, so he could roam around stage and have them on him. Mm. So at the moment, these are quite a few different products that people use to hold picks on their guitars. So you've got the Guitar Assassin pick holder, which is the main floor is that it goes on the headstock of the guitar, meaning it's too far for you to reach to be able to grab it in case you drop one. Also got double-sided tape, which if you live in a house with pets is going to get very disgusting very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, the head behind the nut headstock uh, holder, uh, pick holder, sorry. Um, its main flaw is that it will adjust, it will change the pitch of the guitar because mm. of the amount of tension you're putting on the strings. It'll also make it vibrate differently. It'll change the tone quite a lot. And obviously, everyone's seen the Dunlop pick holder. Mm. Guitarists for years have been using it. Its main flaw, though, is the way it looks. And also, it's a centimeter thick. It sticks out like a sore thumb on your guitar. See, my product, which I am proposing to you guys, is sleek, looks good, and is there whenever you need it. So these are the picks that are most commonly used today by modern guitarists. Problem with them is that they're small, about 28 millimeters in length. They're made that way as it's meant for fast playing. The problem with it is that most pick holders aren't designed for that, they're designed for much larger picks, mm -hmm. meaning they just fall through and they get lost. It's also one of the most used straps, such as the one on my guitar here. Uh, well, it's been used for years now, this strap design. And how are you supposed to color match a pick holder to something like this, a Steve Vai marble or a swell pattern? There's really no way to do it. Same thing with this guitar, it's almost impossible to match a pick holder to it as with this one. So as you can see, this has a beautiful flame maple veneer on it, or flame maple cap rather. There's really no way to get something to match that color. Also, any color you want, such as orange, blue, purple, whatever you want can be on your holder. This here is the product. This is just a rough prototype at the moment. It's made out of wood. These at the moment are wrapped in carbon fiber to match accents on this guitar. And in the future, we'll be able to be colored any way you want. Whether it's a marble swirl pattern, like on the Steve Vai guitars, carbon fiber like this, solid colors for anything you could imagine. They'll also be made out of plastics, to silicons, to metal, whatever you want. The future of this product is to, like I said, make it out of proper materials, and also to um, be able to have any color you want. Custom designed face plates, so that if you want to, you can just swap them out for each individual guitar. My ask today is to get connections to the music industry. Um, so obviously I know 
So how many of you guys have that? Uh, $120 purchase materials, production, alloys, plastics, latex, molding equipment, all that sort of stuff. Connections to guitar influence to promote the product, pickpocket. Connections to manufacturing companies to be able to manufacture it. Thank you guys for listening. From the start? Wow, Gerby, that's uh, a really great pitch. Thanks. The first thing that sort of hit me is that you started with a conversation. Mm. So we were already engaged right from the very sort of get go and you knew exactly what you were talking about. Um, your, your tone went up and down and you emphasised key points. It was just a really professional pitch, mate. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I love it. I'm actually tweeting Brett, who's the principal of the Music Industry College, to let him know about your idea, because he works with people like Thelma Plum, um, and Asta and a whole bunch of other musicians that have gone through his school and I know he'd be super psyched about the idea so I'm not texting friends, I'm tweeting people I know about your ideas as I'm watching. That's but I, brilliant. I would agree, I really like the way that you opened with that sense of engagement. It also gave you an idea of what the level of expertise was of your industry of the judges which I noticed you could then tailor some of your conversation to making your content accessible for us because we're not musicians. So the way that you then explained what the problems were and why your solution was effective um, was different for us because we weren't musicians and then obviously you could tailor it more specifically to Claire who was. So I really liked that little ability you had to test the expertise and then tailor your pitch accordingly after that. So really great work. Thank you. Kirby, uh, when, when we first met and you told me you were making this um, pickpocket, pickpocket? Yep. Um, yeah, I was, I was pretty excited about that anyway, because it is a problem. And yes, you're right, the, the, other, um, the other options that, and alternatives that you mentioned have been in the marketplace a long time, and they come with pros and cons. Um, but for the small picks, they're pretty hopeless. And also, I don't like having anything on the headstock either, because it does, it has the capability to change the pitch of your guitar. And, Have you thought, you, you know, because you can do this to any pattern, any colour, your MVP really would have to be something that was a, a stock yep. standard and see what the response to the market really is. Have you thought that far ahead of, you know, produ you obviously asked for $120 to, for materials. How, what's your path to production from today to get that first um, that trial product into the marketplace? Well, um, the main, the base model of it was going to be a it's just solid black uh, holder yep. that you could then put a custom plate on it, so you can take it on and off if you want. So you can have, so you can just paint it, you can draw on it, yep. you can do whatever you want, put custom vinyl, that sort of stuff on it. Yeah. Um, and then, well. Didn't really think past that okay. at the moment. So, so my question is, how, how are we going to get just a, a stock standard black, plain finished, or whatever colour, white, yeah. black, green? How are we going to get that into the marketplace to trial it? Well, uh, I was thinking about getting it to influencers such as music influencers on YouTube yep. or magazines, because there are a lot of people in that area that do test out gadgets and stuff like this for your guitar. So being can able I to get take, it to a wider audience. Can I get you to take a step back? Where are you going to manufacture this? How are you going to manufacture oh. it? Um, have, have you actually got your drawings? Your, have you done drawings yeah. in CAD? So, so this, the whole product was made in CAD. Yes. So I designed it and made it all in there. Then Fantastic. I went and got CNC cut, uh, sorry, laser cut yes. up at the school's uh, manufacturing yep. department. Yep. Uh, in the future, I'll be using CNC's to yep. produce it as yep. it'll be made out of plastic or moulding it if it's made out of latex. Yep. So it's currently made from wood, did you say? Yeah, it's just for the prototype. Can we have moment. a look? Oh, mm. uh, yeah, sure. Um, it's now on a strap at the moment. Yep. Um, let's see, so yep. this is a bit wider than it's yep. supposed to be at the moment because it's wood. Yeah. And it just... That's at the moment. Yeah. How will product. it fasten? Uh, well, it was planned to have a clip yep. of some sort that goes around the opposite side, so if you yep. pull on it, it doesn't pull it off. That's so nice because it doesn't... You're not going to lose them. I'll hand this up because these guys haven't seen this. I really like the design. Um, 
You could effectively make a hundred of those yep. here. Could you do that? Yeah, hundred percent. How much would it cost to make each one? Well, I've worked out it's around a uh, hundred by one hundred millimeter square of plastic to produce one. Mm -hmm. uh, that costs about, um, depending on how big of sheets you buy, costs anywhere between a dollar to five dollars for a sheet. For a sheet to be able to cut it out of. Yeah. How many in a sheet? Uh, well, if it's a 300 by 300 sheet, that's nine, yeah. and that's about $15. So they work out to about, I think it's $3 each, mm -hmm. around that sort of price, and then the market value would probably be about $5 mm -hmm. per one. For the base Is there level. any other way to make them cheaper than that? Uh, using cheaper materials, obviously, would uh, lower the cost quite a lot, but for models such as carbon fiber or ones, which I'd like to move into in the future, yeah. it's going to be a lot more expensive, yeah. just due to the cost, cost of material. Okay. I awesome ability to answer the questions we're throwing at you at the moment like that's mm. super impressive um, often when people pitch like especially young people you guys forget that you've got um, a captive audience in your school how many students are at your school uh, I think well in this grade alone there's not there's 90 I think the school is I think a thousand yeah. ish yep. how, how many uh, of those thousand do you think might play an instrumental play guitar well I know in this room most of them were out of the classroom at that time but a few people in this room alone about five of them including myself play guitar mm. so adjusting that maybe about a hundred people in the school cool so imagine if you started instead of looking for influencers mm. what if you just started being your go-to for students to use and you actually marketed to schools who purchased them for their school music programs that way, instead of having to find 500 customers to sell 500 to, you might find one customer being one school to sell 500 of them to. Yeah. Mm. So, and then obviously once you start making them at scale, they do become cheaper yeah. for you to, to make at that point, which means that you can drop your costs. The other thing is, I would say about those costs, I love that you knew your numbers off the top of your head. That's so, so compelling mm. for a young person. Thank you. Um, the three dollar cost for the five dollar sell, I think you'd want at least double your cost price because okay. you won't have enough margin to be able to mm. a continue to make your profit and and b pay yourself because it's no good for pickpocket if you've got to get a part time job to pay yourself. Yep. you're better off charging a little bit more and then having more of your time to invest in in the business. So, but great work on your numbers. Mm. Um, I would have put this on our table when you started your pitch mm. too, oh, okay. so Sorry. that we could look at it. And sometimes we don't think of that, but it's 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 helpful to have it, the physical product in your hand whilst yep. you're talking, because that's really compelling as well. Yeah. Have you thought of, um, <coughs> with the plastics, have you thought yeah. of um, working with recycled plastics? Mm. Uh, not at the moment, just because of the like inconsistency when it comes to the material that's made out of, for example, you could have melting down milk bottles, and at the same time it could be melting down plastic bags, it's just, it's there's too much of a variable, and if you're using something like laser cutting, you need to know what material it is yeah. to be able to do it safely. So what, certain what ones. kind of material? Uh, Are you locked into a t certain type of material? Well, at the moment, I'm looking at ABS plastic, uh, which means it needs to be CNC'd as it releases quite a lot of toxic fumes if you were to cut it with a laser. So CNC'ing that um, is really the way forward uh, when it comes to using ABS. And your stock size, you said, was 100 by 100 mil? Uh, yeah, about that, yeah. There must be someone on the coast that's using that material to build something else mm. that are creating offcuts that size mm. that would give yeah. that to you for free. Mm. You, and you've just got a free material. Mm. Yeah. you just got to go around, search that, search the industry who's using the feedstock, go and have a chat to them. And, uh, I would chat to, um, and I'll, I can connect to you, Yaz from the world's biggest garage sale. Like yeah. she accumulates all kinds of weird and wonderful waste and it, she would be somebody who would definitely know who might have that kind of product lying around that you can get your hands on. And I would be very happy to connect you with a guy called Mel Messina, who is a specialist in recycled plastics um, through, um, uh, he had a big company here on the coast um, a few years ago. I don't know if you've ever seen, it, like in Bunnings, they have these rolls of plastic that you, they're about this high, you can put them into the ground as edging, right? It's all made out of recycled plastic. Well, uh, somebody else came along and bought, and bought the business, the company off him, but his speciality is um, manufacture and design in recycled plastics. So if you were thinking of looking, even just exploring that, because, you know, it, it's a good selling point as well, because we want we want to get rid of plastics out of the world. Yep. Um, 
I would be very happy to connect you with Mel Messina. He certainly on a manufacturing point of view, he would be able to help you enormously with some advice and he may be able to even guide you as far as uh, looking at uh, using recycled plastics as, as, a, um, as an MVP. Yeah, and I think all your other materials you could take the same approach. Yep. Um, and as Claire just said, you, you, know, you could almost pitch this as a circular economy mm -hmm. product yeah. if you can find a use for them once the artist is finished with it. So if you can send it on to someone else that can melt it down or reuse it, then yep. perfect. And the other thing I just wanted to say was the customization that you've pitched around colours and with the logos or band names. Yeah. I think yep. that's a really important part to, to sort of draw in a, a much wider customer base as well like artists are going to want to have their own creative style input and so it's going to be much more attractive if you can offer that down yep. the track once you get past your MVP it's a great design yeah, though fantastic for a guitarist it's it's a no-brainer thank you well done, awesome. well done. Good morning, my name is Noah, this is Charlie, and together with Tom who couldn't be here today, we are Calm The Wave. Um, Calm The Wave is what me and Noah started last year as a rock sort of alternative kind of band, and with the help of my brother Thomas, he's now a drummer, so I play bass and vocals and Noah plays lead guitar. So due to a change of plans from yesterday, we were originally going to perform for you guys, but I lost my voice, so we can't perform for you guys. But We've got a couple of clips, we of snippets of performances we've done at the school, yep. and yes, we'll show you some of them if that's okay with you guys. Absolutely. So the first clip is from our first ever performance we did. This is my first time singing in front of people, and it's a bit bad quality, but this is the start of this year, and we did a song called "Only Want to Know." It's a bit of a slower type, but it should be volume. <laughs> So that's that first clip. And then the second clip we did um, was a couple, last week and we did a kind of acoustic kind of session. A lunchtime concert. Yeah, so we had to wing most of it because the other people didn't shop. So we came up, we did this song, which was the song we were originally gonna perform today, but we performed this and I got a little snippet of that. So this is this performance. And I mean, oh yeah? I didn't say, it's a stripped down version <laughs> because the original song has drums, two guitars, bass and vocal and everything and then we, Sort of, yeah, we stripped it down to just yeah. one guitar and vocals. Yes. So that's that performance. And the last performance I want to show you is, so we have recently been inducted into the Battle of Bands and we want to be doing that against Mulaney and Biowa. Mm -hmm. And we have got a snippet of that submission we did, which is, this is with my brother, so this is all instruments combined. So it's a bit loud, but it's the quiet bit into the solo. So here's this. No, so it shouldn't be that loud. <laughs>
So yes, yeah, yeah. so that's that. And next slide. And yes, so she did next there. So, so at the moment we have an Instagram page, and we've just passed 100 followers. So, <laughs> thank you. Um, you can see in the middle one here we've reached. So the amount of people who have viewed our posts and such over the last seven days are 151 people. The people who have shared, liked, commented, and whatnot are 86 people. And yeah, that's over the last seven days. It's pretty good. And on the right here, you can see some of the posts from our first performance that we showed you at the beginning. So just some feedback. Yeah, there's some comments. And on, that. and on that, on one of the posts we've made, our biggest thing is I think we've got over 700 views on one of our posts, which was pretty good. And that was our first post. So we're gradually getting up there, and it's been about active for maybe like two months. So we have we've just posted maybe six for um, five <coughs> posts, and yes, yeah, so we're gradually getting up there. Mm. So yes, so what we are asking for is our main thing we're asking for is sort of mentoring. So we want someone to help us understand the fundamentals and get kind of um, excel into the, like certain areas of it, like maybe promoting that we're getting into, and we're using this Delorean time to get to the business kind of ratio of it, like maybe promoting, advertising, all that. So that's all we're asking for. And also funds for maybe advertising promotion and funds for equipment. So that's what we're asking for and yes. Yeah, so the funds for advertising and stuff would be on Instagram how, and like Facebook, how you can pay them a certain amount, then you can get your post to actually be shown to people. And then the funds for equipment is sort of to keep our instruments maintained and whatnot, for like strings and amp equipment, like all that sort of stuff. So yes. Thank you, we've been calm the wave, and yes, thank you. <laughs> Would anybody mind if I went first, because I've got to go and do this yeah, soon. Sure. Guys, um, I started out my musical career um, as a duo and then went to a trio. Um, you need to stand up when you play. Yeah. Don't sit down. Yeah. Um, only, the only people that can sit down really to play are pianists. And if you happen to be really so good and you're just doing a slow number and it's the encore, stand up because you, you need to open your diaphragm right out and you're sitting like this. I want to hear your voice because you've actually got a really nice, good voice. Thank you. So, and I want to hear that more. And don't sit down to play guitar either, yeah. unless you're you know, just crooning something. Stand up because you will present yourselves much better. Um, Battle of the Bands, uh, that's a great opportunity. Go out there and smash it, have, have fun Thank uh, and you. enjoy it. Don't worry too much about um, the outcome of that. What you need to do is to keep practicing, keep playing, keep writing. Um, you're not at the stage where you should be thinking about spending money on advertising. Yep. Absolutely not. And Facebook will chew money up. If you don't know how to use the advertising correctly, or the, the ability to use the advertising, if you don't know how to use it, then it will just take your money. You are far better to um, work on uh, Instagram. Post something every day. Doesn't matter, doesn't have to be a clip of you playing, it could be pictures of your musical instruments, nice shots, okay, or favorite artists. Post something every day. Um, you need to really raise your profile organically with your peers. Um, I'm happy to provide some mentoring um, because that is an industry that I was in for a very long time. Thank you. Um, so talk to Mrs. Cullen and she will um, she will sort that out at a, at a time um, that's going to suit. Um, but just keep doing what you're doing, okay? Yeah. Um, you've got a really good voice and uh, that solo was really nice. Thank you. So, but I have to go. So <laughs> at this stage, I'm going to give you. 22 DeLorean um, so much. vouchers and uh, please ask Mrs. Cullen to contact me and um, I'll be happy to provide you with some mentoring. Okay, thank you so thank much. You. I'm so sorry I have to That's leave. Fine. I'll be back. Okay. Uh, I've got a question. So do you have a, like a purpose behind the band? Is there something that you, you know, is there a key message you're trying to do or achieve or? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not like sort of other projects how they're sort of trying to like raise money or something for a cause. We're just we're a band. We want to play shows. We want to get our name out there. We want to do all that sort of stuff. You know. Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, so I would echo Claire's point around organically 
sort of growing your audience? Because the, if you can just go back to the numbers you put up on your your dashboard, they're pretty good numbers for, I think you said five, posted five times? Yeah, five times, yeah. So just work on that and grow that. And I think one of the keys is to try and get shares from that those 100 people or 150 to amplify the organic spread as much as you can. Yep. Um, you'll get far better value out of that and you'll know that it's real versus the other downside of the advertising apart from risking your money is that you're not necessarily going to be sure that whoever sees that ad is really engaged with your content. Yep. So there's a big risk with that kind of advertising which obviously those platforms don't necessarily share with you. Um, I think you've got a much better um, I mean, I just quickly, there's a lot of kisses and love hearts <laughs> out there, so, you know, because when I saw your first clip, I'm thinking, this is, this is Pearl Jams, you know, silver chair style, this is going to... Showing your age there, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think uh, that's what I would focus on um, primarily is, is organic, mm. get some mentoring around that and just focus on your, as Claire pointed out, your craft, that's probably the best thing to do now. Thank you, thank you. Why do you guys play music? Why? Mm -hmm. Well, because we love it, really. Yeah, I love playing music. Like, like, I get home and I play, I just grab my, like, for example, I have a bass at home, I just grab that and play it for hours, and then, yeah, and then just, I love doing it. It's, when did you start playing? I play, I started playing um, bass in grade six to grade seven. My brother started teaching me, because he was a former bassist, then he went to drums. And then I started vocaling maybe five months ago, mm -hmm. starting this year. Yes. And I started in grade seven because of Corey, because I saw him play guitar, and I was like, that's sick. <laughs> I want to so, be that guy. Exactly, yeah. So I just started on this really trash little nylon string guitar, but I loved it. I don't go a day without music in my life, so. Um, I think those, so those parts of your story are really compelling, and so... I, I love the casual and confident way the two of you pitch. You've got a very natural way of bringing people in, which is, I, I liked that a lot. Um, what I would have loved to have heard more, and I hear you on the fact that you guys aren't raising money for some cause, but you are trying to secure or interest people in what you do. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen like the Simon Sinek stuff around like, what's your why? He's this guy who talks about that people don't buy like what you do, but they do buy why you do it. And so yeah. I think part of what will bring people into your sphere amongst all the other people that are playing instruments and putting bands together is people getting really excited about the three of you and yeah. the stories that sit behind the three of you. So I would really encourage you to look at how you're bringing yourselves to calm the wave and how you're showing up in your socials that way by creating that personal connection and those personal stories. And that might be through your the writing of your music and sharing some of those lyrics and, and why they matter to you. It might be in sharing a little bit about why music is so important to you and why it's so important that people back local artists because if they don't, then what happens to the music industry? But I think really double down on this. I can see how passionate you are about this. People are gonna get around you if they love your music, but more importantly, if they love you. Yeah. So use your socials as a way to share insights, use your story, to, like the story function, to get people yeah. behind the scenes and to really connect with people who are gonna back your music. Yeah. Um, the other thing I would say, I'm sure you guys are all around this, but I'm pretty sure Triple J Unearthed is obviously open at the moment, the high school category. So if you guys haven't put your stuff up on Triple J Unearthed for that competition, you should definitely do that. Um, and I, if it hasn't closed, I think it's closing soon, so yeah. I would, you know, sneakily jump on your phone and check that date as soon as you step down from here. Um, but I would also do a bit of a Google about what other platforms you can put yourself in. And it's not about winning, it's just about getting better at performing, yeah, getting better at putting yourself out there and, um, you know, accessing different pockets of people. Um, so those would be my sort of advice. But get really good at crafting your story. Yeah. So like when we sit here and, and I'm not a musician, but I love music, but more than that, I love the stories that sit behind people. So I wanna see like those little parts of you about, you know, the first time you sung and how like, how maybe challenging that was and how you've really grown in confidence. I wanna hear about that story that you watched a friend playing and went, I wanna get around that. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you guys have both been playing instruments and singing for such a short period of time is a really interesting part of your story as well. So I Thank think you. really double down on the storytelling. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you.
Hello, I'm Max and alongside me is Noah. Together we are roped in and our plan is to help and support and raise awareness <coughs> for the dogs currently in the Sippy Dog Dog Shelters. We know that some dogs have and are still being treated unfairly to this day, whether they are being abused by owners and they're being taken for their own safety or just escaped their property without pet identification. We want to make sure that these cute little puppies and big friendly dogs are getting the best life possible. Our business, Roped In, does 100% cotton dog toys and long lasting rope chew toys that guarantee you and your dog have hours of endless fun. Not only do you receive a quality dog toy, but with every purchase, we are donating 50% profit to our partners, the Sippy Down Dog Shelter, also known as the Sunshine Coast Animal Refuge Society. This can be shortened to skulls. Our purpose is to help these lovely dogs find new homes where they are loved and cared for through selling our toys. This RSPCA national statistics tell us that approximately over 40,000 dogs are put into shelters every year which is just over 30% of all animals taken into rescue shelters. For the past five years, this number has decreased from 47,000 dogs annually to now just 40,000. Our goal is to continue the, the downward trend. These dogs all deserve better lives and a home where th they can feel safe, loved and protected. One of our future goals is to design a website giving us more in-depth ways to help people find out about us and overall help these dogs. A alongside with our donations to SCARS, we are helping dogs all, we are helping dogs all breed with personalities to find their forever homes. For example, this dog Roxy, which is there, you can see the cute little dog, a two-year-old crossbreed who is a sweet, natural-hearted and caring little girl looking for a devoted and passionate family to spend the rest of her long life with. Our Instagram page, Roped In, spreads awareness and helps puppies like Roxy get adopted. Our main goal is to help these adorable dogs find a family. The only business expense that we have is around $30 for the dog toys to get our business off the ground. Our consumers will mainly be dogs as they will be receiving a rope chew toy for their furry friend, but also they know with the purchase they are donating to dog shelters which will help these dogs get to a safe home. If you own a dog or puppy, you will understand that no matter what, they will show us unconditional love and this is because we as humans have provided for them for so long now. Some puppies through have had a rough start to their life where they have been physically abused, starved or feels like they've been forgotten about. We are trying to change this. These are, these ones are currently in shelters. Our competitors include other donation pages such, such as Petemba and other fundraising and donating websites. On the other hand, we will have competitors like Tails who sell dog chew toys. But what sets us apart from our competitors is, that, is the fact that we are a combination of both businesses. Unlike Petemba, we are giving the customers a product and it, our difference from Tails is that our chew toys are donating money. This allows us to be a preferred distributor as we are pleasing both needs of the consumers. This will overall lead to more buyers as people are much more drawn into donating to a good cause if they're getting something in return. People will find out about us 
via our Instagram page, roped in, as as mentioned above, our soon to be website where you can donate and receive our products to help dogs need at scars. Also on our social media pages, consumers will be able to see the dogs that are currently in the Sippy Downs dog shelter. This will help these dogs shelter and we will create more ways for people to find out about these dogs looking for a new loving home. Together, Max and I understand that we alone can have an enormous impact on a dog's life. And this is what drives us to continue going. Dogs love, us, dogs love us unconditionally, and there is absolutely no reason why we can't do the right thing for them and give them the best life possible. We will continue to help dogs get adopted one by one, and we can start achieving our goal, which is lowering the number of dogs currently stuck in shelters. The feeling of donating, let alone giving dogs new safe, loving families, is what motivates us to go on. Our biggest achievement to the state is partnering up with SCARS and, and sponsoring them. This is not only allows us to donate to them, but also means we know, uh, also knows that we know we are helping dogs find a new and better families. Thank you for your time today. Max and I hope that you thoroughly enjoyed our presentation and we hope that you believe we are helping to end a big problem. Any questions? Well done, guys. <laughs>two dogs so I, I'm potentially one of all my dogs are one of your consumers um, they get around some new toys um, I, I think what I would love to flag is that part of the power of your product is the storytelling behind the dogs that you're helping um, and there are some cool little things you can do to tighten the connection be between the product and the problem um, and I remember a, a group of young people on the Gold Coast pitching to me about t-shirts that they were selling and the shirts were going to, um, the proceeds from the shirts or part of the funds were going to a shelter that was on the Gold Coast. Um, and I didn't think that particular idea was distinctly unique until they told me that on the tags for each of the shirts they were going to put QR codes and that QR code would link to the shelter advertisement for a dog that was looking to be adopted. And that person, if they registered their email, would get a notification when that dog was adopted so that they would have that investment in, oh, I helped Roxy, um, but, you know, get a home. And this is Roxy with her new family. So closing the loop around, I'm helping this particular dog and then this dog's got a home and I feel really good about that. So I'm going to buy another product so I can help another dog and then see that loop closed as well. So um, perhaps my suggestion would be is to embed a really neat way of making that connection for your customer to the individual stories of the dogs really yeah. tight because then that's something that people share like look I bought this dog toy and now Roxy's been adopted and I feel really great about myself so um, but typically dog owners are people that want to do the right thing by dogs so you're tapping into a market that I think will really support your concept which is good yeah and I would I guess what I got out of your presentation was your purpose was like super clear mm -hmm. and I could see the, the passion that you guys have for your purpose. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of then getting opportunities to share that with all the potential people that might buy your product um, or donate once you get your webpage up and running. So it's just, I've got two dogs as well um, and go through a lot of toys because one of them is a beagle so it can chew anything into bits in about five minutes. So one question I was going to ask you is around the, the rope chew toy that you, you're going to sell, are you just focusing on one kind or are you going to have a range of them or and, and what are you going to sell them for versus what they cost? So at the moment we were just looking at one, yep. but we knew we were going to look at more, but we're just focused on one yep. until we get enough buyers and if we get more money we could potentially get like different products. Yep. And you know, with the cost of one is two dollars. Well, the one that we showed you, the cost of that is two dollars, and we could sell it for like ten dollars plus because we're also donating to Scar. So yeah, yeah, and that's what I want to highlight as well. It's one of your great advantages is that you do have that. It's like a social enterprise kind of or profit for purpose business. Um, 
So that's a really valuable thing to, to communicate to people and you've got to do it really clearly, which is like the idea of the barcodes yeah. or the scan codes is a really good one. In one of your slides, you had up there, you did some research on your competitors. Yeah. Um, and I think you listed some other um, charity kind of organisations yeah. as a competitor. I would think about that and see if you can maybe rewire the way you see it and they might be collaborators mm. that you could partner with because you're not really competing on anything really. You know, it's all the same end result. The company that just sells the dog toys and collects their profit, then yeah, maybe they're a competitor, but think about the other ones as potential collaborators. And that way, when you collaborate with, with existing um, organizations like that, you get a much bigger reach as well. Mm. And, you can, and you can share the benefit that you're both creating and, and they'll give you ideas, you can give them ideas. Um, so that's one really important thing to think about. Um, yeah, and I guess just keep keep your um, Instagram going with all those great pictures. As a dog owner, I was sort of suck it in straight away. Um, but yeah, keep up the good work, guys. It's really good. Thank you. So we're allowed to give away Claire's money. <laughs> and given... She's involved with scars, isn't she? I believe she is. I believe she is. She might even be the founder, isn't she? Potentially. I'm going to give 30 of Claire's money away. <laughs> Don't tell her. Give it all. Um, and I'm going to give you 30 from myself as well, guys, because I'm a doctor. Emily Mullins, Emily. please go to secondary administration immediately, please. Thank you. Um, I would think about, and we've talked about this before, how can you make your dog toy a little bit different to other people's dog toys? So I'm yeah. always captured by, oh, this might be a little bit new and it might really engage my dog for a little bit longer. I'm particularly captured by dog toys that are made by, like again, recycled materials or taking, like, so um, once you get up and going and you've got a little bit more bandwidth, I'd be thinking about what's my point of difference from a product point of view that people might go, oh, this looks different. I definitely want to give this a go with my dog as well. But good job, guys. Thank you. Thank you for all your advice. If you ever get one that's indestructible, just call me. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Test it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, no, nice work. One to go, guys. And we haven't won the break yet. Thank you. Remember the days where you were in primary school and it was lunchtime. It is hot, you are bored and there's nothing to do. Well, we are here to fix that. Hi, we are Let's Get Physical and today we are showing you what we do and who we are. First, let us introduce ourselves. My name is Kiara, this is Gracie, this is Daniel and Jack. Let's Get Physical is a Wednesday lunchtime program for primary students in grades four to six. We are a group of Year 10 DeLorean students who have a major passion for sport and want to encourage all ages to have a similar mindset and enjoy varieties of sport during their lunch breaks. We have conducted our own research on our consumers by walking around at lunchtime observing which area of primary school students that have nothing to do at these breaks. After that, we came together and decided to focus on and target the children that are in grades four to six. This is because of the year mm. ones to threes play in the playground in there, and the four to six play on the main oval, and that's where we noticed uh, that not many kids were being as active as they could be. Once we finalized this, we created our posters and went to the head of primary to discuss the issue and to find out more about information about our consumers. 
We have targeted our consumers by placing our posters around the year four, five and six classrooms so that these students know when and where we are running our program. The head of primary also posts a notice on Gateway where, where students will be able to see this electronically. We have discovered a problem at lunchtime, teaching school, <laughs> where the kids sitting under staircases in corners by sitting by themselves and doing nothing but being bored. We've also noticed that it's a common thing, not just on Wednesdays, but every day, where we are able to run a program on Wednesdays at first break. We've identified the particular age group at students that hang out near the oval, before, uh, before the oval, near the stairs, on the table, well, at the oval. <laughs> Did you know that 28% of children and adolescents in Australia are overweight or obese? It is recommended, sorry, I'm getting anxious, I, You're doing really well. You're doing great. No, no. Did you know that an estimated 28% of children and adolescents in Australia are overweight or obese? It is recommended that school age kids get one hour of physical activity every day. We will be helping contribute to 50% of that on Wednesdays. Also, the Centre for Disease Control and Prevention reports that kids aged 8 to 10 spend an average of 6 hours per day in front of screens. Kids aged 11 to 14 spend an average of nine hours to, per day in front of the screen. We have come up with a program that will help solve this problem by running a lunchtime sport program. This program will encourage kids of all abilities to come along and participate in our weekly activities. The sports and activities that we are providing the students with is a range of ball games, obstacle courses, fitness programs, skill back, based activities to help improve their own abilities and make self-progress. The program will run every Wednesday at primary students break, which starts at 11 o'clock and finishes at 11.30. In this half an hour, we dedicate to helping primary students improve their skills and fitnesses by doing a range of activities over the coming weeks. So far, we have already done soccer, touch football, stuck in the mud and tunnel ball. In upcoming weeks, eight, nine and 10, we are planning to create an obstacle course that will use a variety of muscles to ensure the kids are using up their energy, playing netball, chicken toss, <laughs> and doing sack <laughs> We have also created a social media account on Instagram that shows our followers. We would like to ask for money to cover the cost of our outfits that we are wearing today, which is a total of $15.80. Also for a reward for the kids, which are lollipops, valued at $10 for 50 lollipops. We would also like to ask for any helpful feedback to help, us guide, to help guide us in the future, not just for ourselves, but also for the students. Thank you. Great job, guys. I think a um, couple of points. First thing, is your presentation with your bands and the balls looked really great, like it caught our eye. As soon as you came in, I was like, What's, what are we talking about here? So you already had my interest before we started you. presenting. Um, and the other really nice thing I liked about in your presentation, I think all of you used your hands quite nicely when you were talking, and that can help engage the audience a little bit um, differently to just using your voice. So I think you did really well, and your messaging was really clear about um, what you're doing, um, why you're doing it. I'd like to know a little bit more about how you're measuring your success because you've already started having you've done some some sessions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's probably my first question for you is how do you think you're going to measure how well the program is running? Maybe a survey for the students to see how they think it's going yeah. for them. Any other ideas? Uh, maybe we, we would record how many students to see if we've grown yep. from our previous yeah. amount. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else? <laughs> I think it's really important to have a think about because the idea um, is really scalable, isn't it? Because every school is going to have the same, I would expect the same issue mm. that you've found. Um, so the fact that you've identified it and it's a student-led 
solution so schools can implement it within their own, they've got the resources to implement it, um, would be something to really think about. So once you establish, you measure the success of your program here, which is your minimal viable product, you have to think about, well, how are we gonna document this so other schools can, can copy it and use it? And then, you know, well, how are you gonna build a business around that program? Who my illustrious shark on the left here could probably tell you a fair bit about, I would imagine. Um, so yeah, well done. It's a good, very good cause, um, and I really love the fact that you uh, you coordinated and you're already out there testing it. So great job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I totally agree on the measurement thing. I think really simple things like the numbers of people attending, because I think that'll not only tell you um, how well you're going, but also which sports or activities are more popular. So that way you won't play or organise games that the kids are actually not that interested in playing too. So it's really rapid feedback. If you get 100 kids every time you put soccer on, but only five when you put on sack races, then you know that sack races are not as exciting as soccer. So like that gives you really good feedback on that too. Um, I've worked with a number of young people that have managed to scale up service-based businesses by employing their mates who go to different schools to run those projects. So. I think that what could be interesting is like where the value in your business lies is in the intellectual property of creating a program. In other words, it might be eight activity sheets that set up like how you set the game up um, with maybe some branding and then you could basically give that kit to a group of other young people at another school to run that activity and then your customer becomes the school. So the school pays you to run that one lunchtime or two lunchtimes or three lunchtimes. Um, the other thing is I know that there's a couple of schools in this area. So depending on when the breaks are, it could be quite easy for you to get across to other schools to run those activities on different days as well. Yeah. So that could be interesting to look at too. The other thing I want to say is, Jack, you obviously hate speaking. Is that fair? Yeah. Mate, I'm so stoked you got up today and spoke. And I know that you're probably thinking, man, I couldn't get through what I said. But the number of times I've worked with young people who just refuse to get up and speak I'm only calling it out because I think it's super courageous, I think it's really brave, and I think that there's a whole bunch of people out there that wouldn't have even stood there and gotten through as much as what you did. So I think you did awesome, and I actually <laughs> thought you were really compelling as a speaker. Like, I was genuinely hanging on what you were saying. So I, I know you probably may think that you're not a good speaker, but genuinely, I'm not, I wouldn't lie to you. I know some teachers do, they say nice things because I don't have to, I'm not a teacher here. So genuinely, I found you quite compelling as a speaker and was really engaged in what you're saying. So don't sell yourself short because you're actually a better speaker than what you think you are. So great job, guys. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna give you $40. And I'm also gonna say that if you want help in how to turn this into a business that you might be able to scale, um, reach out to me and let me know and I'm happy to work with you to develop into a product. So we work with between 50 and 70 schools around the country. Um, so, you know, happy to, if we put something together, to push something out to all of our schools to say, hey, there's this cool new program that you can get at your school. Okay. Thank you. So I'm going to give you 40 as well because I think the, the purpose that you have is really super important um, and there's not enough being done about it in schools or just in general in, in the community. So 40 for me and I've stolen 30 of Claire's <laughs> as well. So there's another 70 there to go towards your, your program. Hi girls. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay. Okay. So if you're going to stand up form in front of people, I just said hi to you. First thing you've got to do is learn to c communicate and, 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 and to your audience, okay? How, how, how often do you play live? Um, well, we do like a few lunchtime concerts here yep. and there. Um, Good. Some of us are involved in orchestra, band, yep. for example, Kiri yep. um, plays in orchestra. I play in the school band as well. Yep. So, yeah. And you've got a fantastic music um, department here. You're very fortunate. Um, do you own your own guitar? Yeah, that's my one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do you own your own keys? No. No. Um, okay. All right. Something like a grand piano or something. Is it? Yes. An upright. Okay. So, 
Have you busked before? No, because we're actually applying for our busking okay. licenses. So, yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm go- I think that what you're doing is admirable. Um, Todd Rundgren is a, a, a great... Do you know, actually know who Todd Rundgren is? Uh, yeah, we've done a little bit of research on him. Yeah, it's real old school. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> you say that you need money to start <clears throat> busking, and you don't. You know, if you can't afford keys at the moment, and if you're going to take a keyboard, you've got to have an amplifier and a battery, or you've got to be able to plug it in somewhere. Um, in the meantime, get yourself some percussion. Get yourself some maracas or a tambourine or something, or, some, or a shaky egg. You don't need money to start busking. You've got a guitar. You've got voices. Your voices are free. Okay, you can make a shaky egg. You can make it out of a beaker with some rice in it. Get inventive. Make lots of different instruments that you can use. Um, you, honestly, you don't need it. When I first started busking when I was at college, I used to do it to um, sort of boost my uh, income when I was uh, away at college. And it was me and a guitar in a subway. So you, you can start raising your profile that way. Um, and that's what you need to do. You, you, to become recognized, which is what you want, you're just gonna have to put yourselves out there and you're just going to have to start doing it. Uh, but when you start singing in front of people, you need to do. You need uh, eye contact, and I need to see that you're enjoying what you're singing. I need you to smile. If it's a happy song, I need you to smile. I need you to put some. You, you know what? You can get away a lot. So, for these, those of you who don't know, I used to be a professional singer. If you can. If you can translate charisma and uh, personality, you don't have to be the best singer in the world. And believe you me, there's a lot of people that are making a lot of money in the music world who aren't great singers, but they've just got great presence. Presence is what's going to get you noticed. <coughs> the communication is what's going to get you noticed. If you're quiet and in the corner and you've got your head down and you've got beautiful voices and nobody's going to notice you. So you just got to take the world by, like taking the bull by the horns, you just got to get out there and do it and put that passion for peace in your heart when you're singing um, and, and let that come through in, in your performance. You don't need money to start. If you, if you start doing well with your busking, you can put some money aside for instruments and the rest of it you can um, you know, give to the, the project. So, well done for getting up in front of your peers and singing. It's not an easy thing to do. And it, for me to sit here and say, oh, you know, you need to look at me, you need to smile, you need to give it a bit of you know, something is a very, easy thing for me to say in many ways it's a harder thing for you to actually do it so I commend you and I take my hat off to you and I wish you all the success in the world because you've got a very uh, good mission and you, it comes from a good place so good luck to you girls and to, to put into context a little bit of what Claire was saying around engagement um, when you're performing Obviously, that's a confidence-driven thing. As someone who's got zero skill, musical skill whatsoever, um, I think you should do a little mind exercise just to remind yourselves that not many people have the skills that you have. So use that to build your confidence and know that there's a lot more of me out there that, that can't sing or play an instrument than you guys can do. It. So just remind yourself that you're actually talented and that might help build the confidence, which then makes it easier to engage with the audience. Um, it's got, I've got a couple of questions. Have you decided how much of your profit you would like to donate to um, the organisation that you talked about? I think we were thinking about 25%, 10% at first. Yeah. Yep. And then as we get more and get more money, we'll increase the percentage. Yep, okay. And then would you know, for each dollar that you then give the organisation, is there a way of getting back from them what kind of impact that helps them create 
like can they tell you for every hundred dollars you give us we can um, you know teach another ten kids or do you have that sort of information? Um, I don't think there was like any of those like specific like statistics on that like it just said uh, like provide donations and it just like helps um, uh, kids without the access of music, music education so there isn't like a specific like um, price that provides yeah. that. Okay. Well, I would engage with them and ask the question because you were doing a really great thing to set up mm. this this um, business to, to help them. I'm sure they'll give you something back and then you can use that in your communication. Just say you're out busking, you might have a little sign that says, hey, by the way, 25% of our profits go to this organisation and every dollar raised helps you know five kids get access to music lessons. I think that's a really important part of making it transparent around the, the really nice purpose that you have. Um, and then one last question, with the busking licence, is there a cost associated with that? What's that cost? $40. So I also, I would have just put that in your, like be specific yeah. in your ask, so $40 for the busking licence, please. Thank you. Assuming that you're going to get it. Um, so yeah, well done, and yeah, again, for performing mm. in front of the group, mm. the whole Shark yeah. Tank, I think that's fantastic. And I really like the sound too, it's really yeah. nice. Well done. Cool, I uh, firstly want to say that the structure of your pitch was really strong. So the way that you actually structured your pitch in talking about the problem, and then introducing your solution, and then your performance, and then your ask and stuff at the end, it was a very well structured pitch. So excellent work on that. I want to uh, double down on what was said around that impact measurement. I think that's really important. And the example that I would use is, there's an entrepreneur who's now Sydney based called Lauren Shuttleworth, who runs Words With Heart, and that's a stationary business. And she's got one of the best impact models because often organizations will say we're going to give 25 percent of our profits or 50 percent of our profits but as a consumer it's really hard for me to know how much of that money is actually going to that cause when lauren first started her stationary business she was looking at doing a one-for-one -one model so for every notebook was bought she was going to send one one overseas but what she realized really quickly was that if she sent notebooks overseas to you know countries in the developing world that didn't have access to them she would actually be taking away um, potential revenue from local sellers of stationery. So she realised she'd be causing a bigger problem if she did that. Then she looked at doing a percentage model, but she realised it was really hard to equate how much good she was doing to that. So now with her notebooks, for every notebook you purchase, it tells you exactly how many days of education have been funded for girls and women in the developing world. For example, if I buy my um, business cards through her business, I can fund 10 days of education. So she's got a really measurable way of tracking through her purchases how much good she's doing. So that information might, might not be readily available on the website of the organisation that you want to support, but if you give them a call and you have a chat to them, I'm sure they'd be able to articulate some sort of conversion rate for you so that you can be really clear. The other thing that I would say is um, your generation... Your generation is so good on like Instagram and Facebook and you've got this amazing ability to go live on Instagram. And if you look at stuff through COVID like Isolade, where, Isolade, where they've just got a whole bunch of performers who are going live at certain times and then directing people to links to donate, you could actually start to build your following and your confidence in performing by actually just going live on your socials and starting to build your audience that way too, particularly until you get your bus busker license. And you might find that you actually get to a whole bunch of other people who might not be geographically located near you and who are going to become your fans and your supporters and also engage with your message too. So don't underestimate the power of using those digital platforms to actually um, create new audiences and, and sort of get people on board with what you're doing. And then those people might come to watch you when you say that you're going to be in a physical place as well. Um, but great pitch, girls. Really well done. Good morning, Shark Tank. My name is April, and this is Liesl, Maddie, and Jade. We have established the Children's Brighter Future Project because we have a passion to help children in poverty around the world who don't have access to education, food, clean water, vaccines, and many other things. These children are born in disadvantaged situations where they do not have access to basic necessities and are stuck in a cycle of poverty. 
never having the resources or the opportunities that they need to escape the cycle. The reason I wanted to join this project is because I was born in the Philippines. And I remember how hard it was to get proper access to things, to important things like education, clean water, and good healthcare. When I moved here, I realized how I, I realized how lucky I was to have these benefits that um, everyone that everyone doesn't get. Most people in the Western world do not have to worry about these basic needs and take it for granted. They have no idea how easily they can help others in less fortunate situations. There are 663 million children in the world who struggle on a daily basis. In 2016, Uganda's poverty rate was at a height of 87.8%. This number makes Uganda the third poorest country in the world. We want to help this country reduce this rate so they can have more opportunities available to them. Poverty impacts a child's future in not finding a job to support themselves and their family. We all agree that this is a huge problem in the world and we can do our best to generate funds towards tackling it. Here's how we want to help. We have researched various organisations that help children in poverty globally, and we decided to support the Irene Gleason Foundation, who work primarily in Kitgum, Uganda. This organisation runs a school with over 4,000 4, primary school students. They also provide these students with two meals a day and basic healthcare. They train older students in various fields of work to, so that they can make a living and provide for themselves and their families. They are truly making a difference in these children's futures. To raise funds for IGF, our plan is to sell a decorative piece, glass, light, glass bottles filled with fairy lights. It is a product that can make any room bright. The lights will fill the glass bottle with a warm glow to create a mood in any room. The light represents a brighter future for children for the children of Uganda. The items to create this product were re are readily available and affordable. We will sell as many as we can until the end of the school year and then make a donation to the I GIGF from 100% of our profits. Our unique value proposition is that we are not only offering a product that can instantly change the atmosphere of a room, but when you buy our light bottles, you know that your money is going straight to someone whose life can make a serious impact on. This separates us from other competition in the market. When we considered selling these fairy light bottles, we did some market research within the school community with regards to whether, they were, whether the product was something people would buy, and if so, how much they were willing to pay for it. There was only a small percentage of people who said they would not buy our product. All of these were male. Of those who said they would buy it, all of them agreed they would pay between $10 and $15. We believe our product will appeal to a wide range of people. However, our target audience is primarily teenagers through school and Instagram and mums and other women on Facebook. We have created both an Instagram account and a Facebook page. We also have access to the emailing the school community. We are asking these audiences to share our project on these platforms in order to create more awareness and generate sales. We will sell to our school community in person by having a stall on the school ground. We will also take buy requests online through our social media platforms, including Facebook Marketplace and organise to meet local customers at a safe and convenient location. The product itself, itself can be used in homes, businesses and services, both indoors and outdoors. People can buy them for themselves or as a gift for others. They can be a meaningful reminder of the impact they help to make in a child's life in Uganda. We partnered with another DeLorean project, Ace Edits, who created our logo, showing the stages of a child growing up and entering their brighter future. We are selling the clear light bottles for $12 each. Our cost so far has been 20 cork fairy lights at a total of $27.40, which is $1.37 per light strand, and 20 clear bottles at a total of $25, which is $1.25 per bottle. We also have four colored we also have four colored bottles in case anyone is interested in which which costs us five dollars to purchase, which is fifteen dollars for customers to buy. We can buy more of these if they are in demand. All of the items we have already bought cost a total of fifty-seven dollars and forty cents. 
If we sell all 24 fairy life bottles, we would make a profit of $230.60, and which is what a hundred percent of our prof profits will go to IGF, Irene Gleason Foundation. And if any of you wish to make a contribution, it would go towards the purchase of more bottles and lights. The proceeds from the sale of these additional bottles and lights would also all go to IGF. Our intention is to make a lump sum donation online to IGF at the end of the school year. We will confirm this donation with our contacts within IGF via email and social media. We hope this will make a difference in the lives of the children of Kidscombe, Uganda. Thank you for listening. Let me just start by apologising on behalf of all the males that said no, because I'd like to buy one, um, and my little son would love this. So, just would like to encourage you to think about some broader markets, people that might be interested. In. Like he, he's one, so he'll stare at that for hours. Um, I, this, I think you guys did a great job at presenting your idea and your engagement style. Professionalism was sort of probably one of the best I've seen today. And what I really loved was you had your, you've got your costs and your profit all sort of listed out, you've done all that work. I'm gonna challenge you to think how you might be able to expand your profit a little bit more. Um, you know, some, a potential idea for example would be rather than sell the bottle, how about you lease it to restaurants for a month so they can focus on your cause for a month, put it on their tables Yep. Spices Resorts have two restaurants on the range here. You get the bottles back, but they pay you the same amount. Yeah. Um, so think about different, different ways how you might generate more profit, use less resources, um, and, and, and create bigger impact. But fantastic um, idea. The, and the other thing I would, is this like, did you guys make this particular? No. <laughs> okay, so that's. The only thing I would wonder is how would you, if I'm at a restaurant and that's on my table, how would I then know that you know this leads to your cause and your purpose? Uh, so. Um, yeah, this is just at MVB, but we originally we're gonna make these like sort of like these tags on it. Mm. It's gonna have like a ribbon or something or some sort of string like wrapping around it, and it'll just have just a little sort of like a photo of the community or something, just saying like thank you, like just like to tell them, mm. like let them know that it's going to a good cause. And yeah. It's just not like a white bottle. Perfect. Hmm. Fantastic. So think about it. Cafes, restaurants all over the coast, if you could tap that market and do it in a way where they just lease it and so you have a fixed number of bottles, you don't have to keep making them. The sky's the limit. Um, but yeah, great, great work girls, that's a fantastic hmm. pitch. Great MVP demonstration. Um, yes, I can't find anything wrong with it. your idea. It's great. Yeah, I love it. I'm such a big fan of simple ideas that, and I love the simplicity of the concept. I think they look really slick on the table. Mm -hmm. I would get around them in my place. Um, I agree with looking at maybe some different places that might purchase them. I also wonder how you can amplify the unique value proposition of your offering um, and whether that's in like branding these corks so they look different. Um, or creating some additional point of difference so that if, I've, if I'm going to different ca um, cafes or places or houses, there's something when I look at yours that I'm like, oh, that's made by these guys. Like there's just something a little bit different or unique um, about that product that, you know, because I, I just Googled and I'm like, how, how many of these are around? And there are lots of people that make them, but I think your value proposition around the profits going to support a cause is really powerful. Can you also create a visual marker on this product that then yeah. is easily identifiable for people when they're looking at it? Um, I worked in Uganda running entrepreneurship programs for a period of time. So the cause is like really, like I relate to why this is so important to you. Um, other little bits of feedback I would give you are thinking about how you can simplify the name of the organization yeah. and also the metaphor like i'm a sucker for a metaphor 
and the fact that this is an element of light and glow and the fact that the prophets mm -hmm. are obviously going to bring light to people who, who may not normally have access to opportunity how can we tighten your product name and branding so that that metaphor and, and the impact of what you're trying to create is really tight around it? Um, similar feedback for you guys is what I gave to um, the organization pr prior in the sense that you, you don't have to give all of your profits to a charity in order to, to do good. In fact, the more money you make, the more good you can make. So don't be afraid to up your prices if it means that you can create a deeper value proposition with your product by individualizing them and it also means that your product is sustainable so that you guys can get paid because the challenge is if you guys aren't getting paid for your time what's going to happen is you're going to go and have to find another job to pay for the things that you want to pay for which means you're going to spend less time building something that could be quite a profitable and be impactful so if you have to charge $24 for these bottles but you've got something different about them. Maybe you build in corks or you do something design-wise on the bottles. Maybe there's etching that you can do the, on them. Um, so it costs a little bit more, but the product's unique, plus you guys can get paid. I think that there's some really cool sustainability in there. Um, and for me, the idea is so, comp again, I s I've said this to one other team today, but if you guys want support in scaling the idea, I'm happy to work with you directly. Like, I think it's a really simple idea and you could sell way more than 24 of these. Yeah. Way more. Like it's it's such a, a simple, neat idea. So good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> this is the best presentation I've seen today. It really is compelling. I agree with everything that Nick has said. What I was really impressed with was you knew exactly down to the last cent what your profit was. It wasn't just around $230. You gave me the cents as well. So that told me that you have really worked this out and you understand exactly what you can make out of this. And it, it costs about $2.28 or 29 cents mm. to produce one of these bottles that you, your markup is very good. Um, I believe that at the price point at 12 bucks, it's as cheap as chips. Mm. Um, you, if you could do what, something to make it more of your own or more in keeping with the, the project, with Irene's project, just like, just exactly what Nick has said, you know, I'd pay 20 bucks. Yeah. I would pay 20 bucks for that. If somewhere on here, even if it was just a little bit of etching, mm. even if it was Irene's logo, that was etched or your logo or or just something that told me or on the bottom or on the bottom yeah, yeah. that um, that every time I turn this on it's shining a light somewhere else in Uganda um, this is brilliant I don't think you're gonna have any trouble selling 24 48 96 bottles I've got nothing to add. I just think this is fantastic. Everybody here has said what needs to be said. Well done. Thank you. Can we have some more DeLorean dollars, please? Yeah, we need more. Because <laughs> we... I'm going to give you guys $50 when I have the rest of the DeLorean dollars. Um, and... If you can, if you get in touch with me, I'll double it and give you $50 of my money as well. Thank you. Yeah. That'll get you another 24 bottles, <laughs> pretty much. While we're waiting, there's another technique you can use to set a price sometimes, which is kind of like a reverse auction. So you get people interested, don't put a price on them, and say we have 24, put in your offer and see where it ends up. And you might end up with 40 or 50 because people will pay for the cause rather than a particular you know, product. I also think people, like if I think about, um, I'm in the process of buying a place, these would look amazing in. I would end up buying like six of them because if I think about the setup in my home, I wouldn't just want one, there'd be a couple that I would place in different locations. So I also think having bundles where you can buy a number of them would also be a really powerful way, or it could be buy five, get one free, or the way that you price it. 
but I think that this is the sort of thing that in people's homes or particularly in cafes yeah. that you'll find you're not just selling one to one customer you might be selling four to a customer or five to a customer so yeah, yeah. so you boys can create yeah. <laughs> did, you, um, did you say we have red purple and green with the other colors I, do you know what I saw on your um, so your Facebook page you yeah. photograph yeah. Who, who took that who did that perfect Although it was really spot on. It just was, um, yeah, beautiful, beautiful photograph. Thank you. Yeah, wicked. I love this. Mm. I love it. And um, you know, I really want you to, I really want you to push this. Uh, yeah, all right. Just the, the scope of where you could sell. You could walk into, you know, the UE office down on the Sunshine near the uh, university? Yeah. Show them and say, how many would you like to buy it for the office? Like, yeah. just go and try it because people will love the idea as we're demonstrating to you, and you might surprise yourself how much you can sell. Can I ask a technical question? How long do the lights last for? Oh, that's one thing we're like still in process testing so far. Yeah. They haven't run out yet. Cool. And so can they can you they spent like about an hour photographing and like another half hour, another same bottles. Same bottles. Cool. So two things on that. Just see how long they last yeah. and if you yeah. can replace the batteries. The you other can, thing that yeah, the bat cool. batteries in here. Yeah. And then solar powered. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. is there a way that for people that are having them in their outdoor courtyards or balconies yeah. for you to have like a connect them to a small panel or something so that they're solar powered too? Yeah, good yeah. call. Or a little charge. Point. And yeah. Until until you do something, you know, maybe that's a bit more permanent on the bottle, if you just um, you know, like in, in Bunnings, you can get this string that is for gardening, and it's just like um, made from hemp, or you know, it's just like. Oh, we actually have. Is it your similar? Tag. Oh no, it, we have something similar. Yep. Yeah. That we were going yeah. to put on it. Just with a, a, a brown paper tag on it or something, and inside you can just have, or you know, just have a photograph yeah. or whatever, it, or just to say what it is. Um, in the meantime. Uh, I think you've got a great product, and it doesn't matter that you didn't invent that because um, because your purpose is what's important. You've been very innovative around what the purpose is, and uh, I love that connecting this light with shedding light. Yeah. Knockout. Here's, here's fifty. Are we giving them fifty. Oh, yeah. I suppose we're oh, supposed to give them forty. Sorry, I started that. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, well I'll give you've, you fifty you've as well. Resolved a rule change. <laughs> and training 
However, the expenses are extremely expensive. That's why the service relies on donations from the public as it costs thousands of dollars to put the puppy through training and placement. Our solution to help donate, donate money to assist in Dogs Australia is selling cupcakes to raise money. We have already started doing this by starting our own fundraiser, selling cupcakes to our school every Wednesday during the first break and at school events. We have gotten permission to do this by the head of primary, middle and senior school. Pricing is reasonable for all ages to afford. Two for one. Cupcake. We sold our cupcakes two weeks ago on Wednesday to the school to see how it would go. It was successful and we ran out quickly. Our first sale showed us how popular the idea was, which we weren't prepared, pr prepared for. We quickly realised that there were a lot more cupcakes to, be satis to satisfy everyone. We then attended the school musical on Friday to, go, to grow our project and let everyone know who we are. On Wednesday we made 84 cupcakes which we made $153 from. We then gave back $48 for the ingredients we bought each week, which left us with 105. That Friday we sold 40 cupcakes, which made us $86. So all up with that week we made 190, which half of that will be donated to the charity and the other half will be kept to buy the ingredients for the upcoming weeks. To help advertise our foundation, we have an Instagram page set up that we update regularly about all the information of Wednesday's cupcakes and upcoming events, so customers know what is coming. There are also emails that get sent out to primary, middle and senior the day before to remind them to bring cash for the cupcakes and where we will be selling them. We have also gotten permission to inform it to everyone through the school newsletter so the whole school can find out about it. In these past few weeks of launching our project, we learned heaps of it's about financing, budgeting, and customer service. We have worked out that we had to make around 40 cupcakes for each grade, which would equal to 280 just for primary school and for secondary, which we made 100 as more primary students preferred cupcakes in secondary. We also used to have a deal, two for three, which we had gotten rid of since it wasn't making as good profit and it wasn't funded. With every good project comes great financial startup funds. In order to continue with this project, we are asking for $80 to help buy ourselves more muffin trays and a decent electric mixer so we can increase our productivity when baking. With this investment, it will help us pers pursue our goal of providing our assistance, providing money for Assistance Dog Australia as everyone needs a dog to cheer them up. Thank you for listening. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> do you do you know anybody that has a, an assistance dog? Uh, no. Uh, they used to be um, Mrs. Weatherbird at our school, and she got adopted. Oh, she's still there. Training an assistance mm. dog. About. I got to look after a um, a guide dog for a week while my my friend and his wife went away on holiday. They decided not to take Queenie with them. And so it was a, a real pleasure to, to have Queenie in my home for a week. But it's very expensive to train any assistance dog, like you have pointed out. You did a great job at informing us of all the costs, uh, where your money would be going. And, and you obviously did your research into, because I saw up on there it's 40,000 to train an assistance, assistance dog. Um, and that you found out that your money would go into that dog's education. Um, I liked your figures, how you had worked out exactly what the cost was in ingredients down to the last cent. Did you take into account the um, electricity costs or the gas costs for the cooking? No. Okay, or your time? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you need to build that into your model as well because even though you are a not-for-profit or you're a, 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 an organisation doing this, giving your time, it, you should be making a note of how much time you are spending um, and, and account for that. Um, I think you've done pretty well, 190 bucks. <laughs> That's pretty good off, what, what was that, 124 cupcakes? I think that's pretty awesome. Have you thought about doing um, boxes of six or four so that on a Wednesday, if you know, if parents want a box that they can buy to have at home? Yeah, at the start we originally were, was thinking about that. But then, yeah, we just wanted to start pretty small and see where we could 
but maybe you could get orders yeah. so that you could maybe deliver them to school on a Friday yeah. and then parents or, or caregivers could pick those up when kids go home. Yeah, there's a lot of kids that are also buying them for like their family and that. Just to yeah, take home. exactly. I can just imagine them in, you know, like little boxes or little bags or something with a nice little sticker on of your cupcake and, you know, cupcakes for purpose. It's who doesn't love cupcakes? <laughs> I know I do. And I, I'd like to know if I was eating a cupcake, it was helping train a dog like Queenie, for instance. So, um, well done. Nice presentation. Thank you. So, yeah, let's, let's get technical about cupcakes for a second. <laughs> How big are they? Are they oh, as they're just the normal standard ones, cupcake yeah. size? Okay, <laughs> right. I'm just comparing that to my bakery. You guys are well underpricing your cupcakes, um, so there's some opportunity there. But I guess my, yeah, my question for you is: Have you thought about? You've had a couple of sales sessions now. Have you thought about how you're going to encourage people to come back and keep buying the cupcakes week in, week out? Um, so we wanted to kind of be creative with it. So we kind of wanted to change like some of them each week yep. and see like which ones they would want. Anything? Any other ideas? Not yet. <laughs> okay. Because I was thinking it'd be nice, just as Claire pointed out, it's eating the cupcakes nice, but knowing that it's going to a good cause is even better. So if I had an idea that I was accumulating benefit over each week that I bought the cupcakes, that would definitely make me come back even more other than just eating the cupcakes. So have a think about that. And then um, I think it was 66% profit margin you had on your... <laughs> It's pretty good, so it's nice to see that you're already thinking about scaling and making them even cheaper with better equipment. Um, I would challenge you to think about how you can just go even faster than what you plan. Like, even do you have a plan for how you're going to scale up? Like, have you got a, a new target that you want to sell next month? Um, not necessarily. Well, challenge yourselves and, and set a target. So, look, we're going to double the amount that we sold in this month, next month. Yeah. And then that will help you plan a little bit more specifically around, you know, do we get the right size mixer? Or yeah. what, how many trays do we need? And then you can you'll just create better impact that way, I think. Yeah. But great pitch. Um, I, I preferred the way you spoke and the messaging that you, you gave to me personally rather than the slides. Some of the slides were a bit busy. Yeah. <laughs> and like, so I would, I just, I'm drawn to the picture on the slide, mm -hmm. not the text. Some people are different, but just keep that in mind when you build a, a pitch deck in slides that, you know, graphics are probably sometimes a little bit better than mm. the big chunky word mm. bits. Yeah. But your, your messaging was really nice and clear, so well done. Thank you. Um, I will echo the judges' comments so far. I think I always find it really compelling when um, the numbers are really clear and you guys translated that really well so excellent work on that uh, I agree around the pitch deck because when there are lots of words on there I start reading them and when I'm reading the words on the slide I'm not paying attention to you so try and think about just having full screen images or maybe a percentage or a number in the middle of the screen as a marker for what it is but then bring the focus back to, to you because you're the compelling part of the pitch the slide deck is complementary to that um, the scale piece is an interesting one. Um, in schools, I wonder if you've thought about uh, the, the notion of some schools having restrictions on red foods or when you can sell sweet foods. Have you guys considered that as a barrier? Yes. Okay, what does that look like or what's your thinking around that? <laughs> uh, to be honest, I don't really know because it's like kind of everywhere. We are mo mainly focusing like around like yeah. 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 That's cool. So I would, when when we were talking about scale piece, I was thinking um, being able to order a box to take home. I think is a really neat way of getting around the what you're serving at school barrier. Um, when it was mentioned around like building up uh, your customer base so that they're frequent flyers for your product. In my head, I was thinking about you know coffee cards that you get where mm, you get your 12th so coffee for free. What if you got your 12th cup?
cupcake for free or yeah. if you bought you know five boxes you got your sixth yeah. one for free or trying to build that customer retention yeah. um, and then I always think that young people being able to employ other young people is really interesting so um, I wonder if you could almost set up franchises of this business in other schools right and so I might maybe I go to Biwa and I contact you guys and I'm like I want to be the licensee of Cupcakes for Cause for Biwa State High School I'm going to pay you a $250 fee and you give me all of the collateral the recipes and maybe your first lot of ingredients and then they are the licensee for that over there because mm. then if you get 10 schools with 10 groups of young people you've suddenly made two and a half grand just on licensing fees for your brand and you don't have to make the cupcakes that they're selling in their schools and they're also supporting your cause but also making money for themselves does that make yeah. sense yeah. yeah so i think that could be a compelling way for you to build your brand without you guys having to make all the cupcakes yeah, good job Thank though. You. Thank you. <laughs> um, just, just to pick up on what Nick, uh, Nick was saying about you know loyalty cards and, and, and that kind of thing, I, I'd really look at that and you know go, go and get yourself one of the you know like stamps, get one with a dog on, you know, so that you're stamping it with a dog, um, and uh, I think that. Who doesn't like a, a coffee card and getting it out to get rewarded? You know, I don't drink coffee, I just like the, 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 the emotion <laughs> of it. But I like reward cards. Everybody likes getting rewarded. Yeah. And I love the idea of franchising to other schools. Yeah. Yeah. Your brand, you know, your logo, the whole kit and caboodle. I think that's a re re really worth investigating. Be a really neat way. You wouldn't even have to do any cooking anymore. <laughs> Sit back and. Yeah. <laughs> Relax. Well done, girls. Well so done. Much. Okay, we've got to do um, dollars now. What was your ask again? How much would you? Um, eighty. Okay, I'll give thirty of. Guidance 
as to what's next, as to what the next steps are. We have also created a logo and attempted at creating a working website. Even though there are many ups, there are also many challenges that we are facing. After talking to an app developer and writers, we are not only are the expenses extreme, but the databases to legitimately create the app are scarce or have not been written yet. Singing or speaking lyrics isn't the problem, but matching a melody from your very own voice to a pre-recorded auto-tune one on a database seems to be the biggest issues. We have looked into many cheap app developers, but we also believe in giving a quality experience to our customers. Some app developers have suggested we only stick to using lyrics and forget about allowing people to use melodies to find their songs. However, this is not what we want. We want to give users multiple options to find the songs that they love and not be limited like every other app. So what's the next step? So the next step for Rapid to improve would be to hopefully gather further connections with people and companies that could help us. Connections to people that create software and apps could seriously help with our issues and could bring Rapid to life. We would also love some help with promoting Rapid and possible investments in our app. Whether these investments be money or extra help, all would go a long way and would help kickstart our journey. It would also be so appreciated if advice is given as to what we could improve on and where to go next. We truly believe in our idea and that Rapid could change the way we discover music. Rapid is an easy, effective music recognition app that can ease your mind and your ears. This is Rapid, the new way to discover music. Well, uh, that's a pretty exciting idea. Um, well presented too, well mm -hmm. done. And this, the pitch deck is really professional. Mm. It looks great, your logo is fantastic. Um, so do you think that the technical feasibility of making it work around the melody is, do you, do you have a sense of whether you, that actually can be done or it's been done somewhere already? Um, for what we have been looking at in research, it has been done through pre-recorded music, but it hasn't been done through like uh, not pre-recorded music. Yeah, human generated mm. kind of, okay. So, yeah, I guess the thing for me is I really like the melody part of it because it's mm. it's kind of what would attract me to to the app, you know, being able to hum my own little tune and it almost becomes sort of a game, like in the car with my wife and, mm. and family. So I think that's a really important thing to track down. Um, there's lots of different ways you can tackle that problem and finding the right developer to do it is always a challenge when you're creating something that's not sort of off the shelf. Having said that, there are lots of machine learning platforms that have models that you can sort of train. They're already built, the model's built, you can train it to do what you want to do. Maybe that's where you need to explore is connecting with some of the digital and thinking about maybe the Perigian hub maybe, digital hub, or to talk to people up there. Um, but Sunshine Coast has got lots of, Claire will be able to dial you in, I think, a little bit better to the to the innovation side of it, but um, think about off-the-shelf tools that can then be adapted to that melody challenge. Um, assuming that the voice, the the um, the lyric part of it's all sorted, um, that'd be a great idea to actually land. So yeah, it's pretty exciting. And um, there's a reason why nobody's done it yeah. yet. Yeah. But is it worth exploring? I think so. Oh, look, I think it's a really neat idea. Yeah. And nobody has, there isn't, there isn't, and, and I, I work in research and development, and from my knowledge, I haven't come across anything that, of, of a, a voice recognition app, music record, where I could pick up my phone and go, la, 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 and it will give me a list of possibilities. That's really exciting. How often people would use it? I don't know. I think people would use it as a game. Yeah, mm. I think so. I think I, you could probably gamify it in some way and turn it into something more than what you've intended it for. Uh, the, I wasn't here for part of this morning because I was running a Zoom meeting um, with 
a, a lady, her name's Catherine, and she was the first female developer that Microsoft hired, and she drove Xbox to be a billion dollar turnover um, product. She's on the Sunshine Coast now. Um, I think I might like to connect you with, um, with Kat Foster. Um, if anybody knows about uh, high level programming and uh, sort of thing that you're looking at, she, she would be somebody that I think might be able to offer some serious guidance. I think this is really neat. Yeah, I look, tech is not my thing. Um, so, I, however, um, you know, at one point in my life, I did secure a, like a 250K investment for a tech platform. So I know a little bit about it, even though I'm not a tech developer. Um, and apps are super expensive, which you guys articulated. Um, I wonder, like, firstly, I love your branding. I think the idea is really interesting. I think what Claire presented as a, a gamification, I think is quite compelling. Um, I wonder if you guys have thought about as an MVP, having a way for people to um, submit their la la la's and then crowdsource what the song is. So other people could jump mm. on that recording and go, it's this song, it's this song, as like a test for mm. it. So actually use the power of other people to listen to that voice recording in order to identify mm. what the song is um, as a first stage. Um, and then almost like Reddit, where you can post something and then people can, you know, post their suggestions mm. of what it is. And then you can, I wonder if you can almost give people, um, like I was seeing like a leaderboard in my head of like the most number of, being the first to identify the song like I yeah. might get badges as I'm like yeah. expert level of identifying um, so I wonder if that could be an interesting way for you to build this concept in a really collaborative fun way for young people to get around whilst you work on the back end of developing the more complex tech um, so that would be where I would look and I would also look to develop a website before you develop an app because developing web platforms are you know this much of the cost compared to looking mm. at, at an app and if you develop it in a responsive code which is not too difficult you can still use it on your mobile in the mm. same way as you can on a laptop um, so those would be my sort of tips around how you can get into market quickly and probably get a really rapid take up of people your age who would really get around a posting, B guessing, and then C climbing a leaderboard to be like some sort of expert level song identifier or whatever it is. But great pitch, guys. Mm -hmm. just, just to illustrate, I'm pretty sure I might get the company wrong, but I think Amazon, Amazon has an image recognition service and part of that is a, a network of people on the end of a computer rather than a machine doing the identification. And it just mm -hmm. uses cloud data high speed internet to send the, in this that case, a picture away, but in your case, a, a melody, and it's seconds to when it comes back. And people are just sitting there and around the world, I think it's this, and then the, and then the computer does the, um, the sort of the simulation to what's mm -hmm. the most common answer. So that technology is there for images, so it should work for the sound. I think it'd be real fun yeah. to so post. Right. Yeah. And I think you could you could use integrate other technology like TikTok to build out that virality of that concept as well. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Totally. What's your ask? Yeah. What do you need? Connections. 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 Okay. okay. Anything? <laughs> okay. Um, I'd really like to work directly with you guys. Um, with your project um, and I would be happy to invest financially some money. This is probably one of the most exciting things I've seen um, in, a, in, in a while. So I will get all of your details from the teachers and, um, and I, I promise that I will put you in touch with Kat Foster. I will uh, perhaps arrange a meeting um, with, with myself and, and you and, and Kat and we'll take that from there. So Thank you so much. You're welcome. I, you. I, I want in. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I'm giving you... Um, have, have we we've gone silly the with these 
like you the changed dollar. the rules, didn't you, Nick, with she the did. with the do with the dollars? There are no did rules I? in option yeah. variable. How did I change the rules? You yeah. upped it. I know, you know, but it was forty was the average, and you could choose oh. what you oh. wanted. So oh. I it's just interpretation yeah. of the rule. Yeah, damn straight. That's my job: interpreting rules and then bending them. Oh, and well, I'm going to go with the new rules, so I'm going to be fifty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I'm going to give you guys forty.